वेलकम टू द केमिस्ट्री क्लास एंड टुडे आई विल कंटिन्यू योर चैप्टर दैट इज केमिस्ट्री इन एवरीडे लाइफ एंड टुडे स्पेशली द लास्ट पोर्शन वी डिस्कस दैट केमिकल्स इन फूड फर्स्ट वी डिस्कस अबाउट प्रिजर्वेटिव्स केमिकल्स व्हिच आर कैपेबल ऑफ इनहिबिटिंग और अरेस्टिंग द प्रोसेस ऑफ फर्मेंटेशन ओके or acidification of any other decomposition or any other decomposition of food that are called preservatives some common uh, food preservatives are benzoic acid sulfur dioxide sorbic acid and its salt epoxides para hydroxy benzoic esters etc now benzoic acid is used as such or in the form of its salt it may be sodium salt or it may be potassium salt okay sodium benzoid or potassium benzoid okay now the optimum ph range for benzoic acid to preserve or to prevent the growth of microorganism is 2 to 4 ph value okay now however sodium benzoid is used in place of the acid because sodium salt of benzoic acid is greater soluble compared to the benzoic acid we know that benzoic acid is hot water soluble okay but sodium salt or potassium salt of benzoic acid will be easily soluble in uh, water okay so these salts have benzoic acid salts have greater solubility okay in water and it is used in generally in soft drinks and in acidic food for preservatives now the common salt that is nacl sugar that means sucrose spices and oils also help to check the growth of microorganism in food and the preservatives or the preservation of food by adding uh, the sufficient amount of this salt is called salty it prevents the availability of water okay uh, for bacterial growth it is used for the preservation of generally in case of uh, raw mangoes ginger peas meat etc okay so in the ga we have uh, already seen that uh, pieces by adding salt they are drying okay dry fish okay now sugar sugars water solution concentrated water solution that is called sugar syrup that is also used for preservation of different things like apples mangoes carrots etc okay sometimes uh, there is chutney mango chutney okay that is uh, sugar syrup sugar syrup is acting as preservative there okay now sugar also checks the growth of microorganism by dehydrating dehydration dehydration or dehydrating them okay now oil vinegars that means acetic acid uh, dilute acetic acid citric acid are also used as preservative for different types of chutneys them is pickles jams squashes etc now sodium and potassium metabisulfide is used for or as a preservative for the pickles jams and squashes it is a preservative and this preservative action is due to the sulfur dioxide gas which dissolves in water to give sulfurous acid we know so2 plus h2 will form h2so3 okay so this uh, sulfurous acid okay uh, formation of sulfurous acid okay uh, inhibits the growth of the bacteria maybe uh, it may be uh, inhibit the growth of the yeast or molds okay now this sulfur dioxide gas only the sulfur dioxide gas itself can be used as a preservative for fresh fruits and vegetables okay next we will discuss that sodium propionate sodium propionate is used in bread and cakes 
to inhibit the growth of molds. Sodium and potassium salts of sorbic acids are also used for controlling the growth of the yeast and molds. In processed cheese, in pickles, certain types of uh, meat products and fish products, okay, here also we are using this thing as preservatives, okay. Now, epoxides such as ethylene oxide, it also can be used for preservative and uh, in low moisture food like dried nuts or fruits, okay, or spices, okay, for this type of preservation we can use these epoxides, okay. And the methyl, ethyl and propyl esters of para benzoic acids can also be used as preservative for baking food and olive pickles and soft drinks and syrups etc. Next we will discuss the additives that chemicals which are added to food to improve the its self life, taste, order and appearance are called food additives. Just now we have discussed one additive that is preservative. Other additives are food colors, flavors, artificial sweetener and for emulsifiers and stabilizing agents antioxidants okay sometimes we have to add some nutrition nutrition supplements such as minerals vitamins amino acid to increase the food value okay next we will discuss the antioxidants antioxidants are the chemicals chemical substance which are added to processed food to prevent the oxidation of fats and subsequent spoilage of the food okay here we have uh, given the examples of two antioxidant one is the butylate hydroxytoluene uh, it is called bht another is butylate hydroxy anisole and this is called bha okay these are the most common antioxidants okay and several esters of gallic acid okay such as pyro uh, such as propyl gallate okay they can be used as antioxidant now what is the function of this antioxidant these antioxidants combine with the free radicals to form a very stable uh, free radical which does not react with food molecules okay so food is preserved next we will discuss the artificial sweetening agents now all of you know that cane sugar that is sucrose and fructose they are used as natural sweeteners but there are many reasons why intake of sugar or these natural uh, sweeteners okay is very bad for our health because it can cause weight gain or obesity and may increase your risk of heart disease increase your risk of type 2 diabetes it may also increase your risk of cancer it may also accelerate the skin aging process even lead to you in depression and a high intake of the fructose has been consistently linked to an increased risk of fatty liver and there are also many uh, kidney disease as you are a diabetic patient uh, if you are a diabetic person, you are taking that the natural sugars, definitely it will increase your sugar level in the bar and definitely there will be different types of problems. There may be problems in eyes, there may be problems in kidneys. Okay. So, in recent years, many calorie free sweeteners have been developed to help the diabetic patients and to control your weight, to control the sugar intake, etc. So some artificial sweeteners are, here one structure is given, that is saccharin, cyc uh, cyclamate, aspartame, okay, alitame, sucralose, L-glucose, okay. So these are the examples of artificial sweeteners. But too much use of these artificial sweeteners have many health hazards such, such as 
it can uh, use of uh, huge amount of use of these sweeteners may lead to uh, headaches there may be depression there may be seizures okay different types of disease may be there okay artificial sweeteners taste sweet because they are recognized by sweetness receptor okay of your tongue they provide virtually zero calories as your body cannot break them so we can use this artificial sweetener we will get the sweet taste but it will not increase your body weight because you cannot digest it and there is no particular enzyme to digest it so whenever you will take it will uh, excrete it by your urine okay so it will not break down and it will not form any energy okay or it is you can tell that this calorie now the first example i have drawn here that is the saccharin saccharin is a very popular sweetening agent discovered in the year of uh, 1879 it is about 550 times sweeter than sugar saccharin is not biodegradable and is excreted as such in urine therefore it does not have any calorific value and saccharin was banned in the year 1981 because of fear of possibility of carcinogenesis but health authorities now agree that saccharin is a safe for human consumption next one is here i have drawn that cyclamate cyclamate is about 7 times sweeter than the sucrose and its use also banned because of its suspected link with cancer next one is the aspartam and aspartam is the one of the most successful and widely used artificial sweetener now we are using that sugar free natura natura powder okay they contains aspartam okay and it is a methyl ester here it is we are observing there is a methyl ester of the dipeptide aspartyl phenylalanine derivative from phenylalanine and aspartic acid so this part is the phenylalanine uh, methyl ester this one and this part is the aspartic acid okay now aspartic or aspartam aspartam is 100 times sweeter than the sucrose and it is slowly hydrolyzed in solution so it cannot be used in soft drinks as well as baked foods because it decomposes on heating and aspartam is very much harmful especially for the children or infants due to mental retardation and there may be brain damages so uh, use of this aspartam or artificial sweetener should be uh, should, uh, should be restricted for the children okay next one is that alitem alitem uh, has the highest sweetening capability and alitem is 2000 times sweeter than sucrose and it is more stable than aspartam okay aspartam is easily hydrolyzed but it is more stable than aspartam okay now sucralose sucralose is 600 times as sweet as sucrose and it is also stable at high temperature and uh, you can use this uh, sucralose for in a large scale cooking or baking processes now all of you know that glucose that is the de sugars okay dextrose is sweet but it is natural okay but l sugars l sugars okay all of you know that the difference between d and l configuration capital d capital l i am telling okay l sugars also sweet in taste however l sugars do not provide any calories because of the lack of enzymes in our body to convert them into energy so therefore they are 
secreted as such through the urine. So hence all eight L hexos okay can be used as artificial sweeteners. Okay. So in this way we have completed the chapter chemistry in everyday life that is in your syllabus. Now in your idiot syllabus there is no soap and detergents that we will not discuss. Okay, if I get time, I will discuss. Okay, so today after this, hope all of you can understand. So thank you.